Hello everybody and welcome back to this new video, a happy beginning of 2021 and we're going to continue with the hack the box introduction to binary exploitation track. So in this video we're going to keep on going, if you haven't watched the past ones, uh, this is building on top of those, so watch those first in the playlist that will be linked below. But we are continuing with RAG, uh, a basic buffer overflow exploit. Let's see if we can get the flag. So we download the file and we see, okay, this is a... Uh, 46-bit executable, like normal, it's not stripped, so that's great. Let's try running it, see what it does. So we ask, get asked a name, so if I type my name, uh, it says registered. Okay, cool. That's that's the binary, that's that's it. So let's jump into Ghidra uh, and see what this is actually doing. So we have this main function, this main function here is going to run the run function, and this run function it's going to do some initialization. We have get asked to enter our name. It's going to do a gets into this buffer. This buffer is of size 48, but with the gets you don't supply how long the input can be. So this can be any any length of inputs. So okay, this is where we have an overflow here because we can overflow this gets function. Cool, cool. We already have an overflow. Easy as that. Uh, and then we have this puts here and a return. So it seems very easy, right? Because we instantly have an overflow and we have a return, so we have everything we need. Well, not quite, because if we go into GDB and we take a look at the security on this, we notice that NX, which stands for no execute, is enabled. What does that mean? That means that uh, in memory, things can either be writable or executable. So for example, the stack will be writable because we constantly write to it and, and, and read from it. But that also means that we cannot execute anything on the stack because it has been written to, so we cannot execute that. And the same goes for the actual the actual code in there, the actual shell code that will only be executable and we cannot write to it. Now, when NX is enabled, usually that means that we're going to have to do return oriented programming or ROP. Um, and what the, what does return oriented programming? Uh, what is that? Well, I'm going to quickly explain that uh, by, uh, by drawing a bit. So we have a function here. We are running this function, this d does stuff, and this is going to return. What does that re this return mean? Well, this return means that if we have a stack here, it's going to take uh, wherever our stack pointer is, it's going to take that address and jump to the address here. So let's say this address is for a different function or, or somewhere in a different function. This points to right here. If we get to this return, we're going to jump to there. This is going to keep on running then. If we get a different return, uh, the stack by that point will have changed. So this pointer will have moved somewhere else to a different address and we'll jump to that and so on and so on. And that's how, that basically, that's how that works. But what do we want to do? Well, we want to control the stack. So we have a buffer overflow, which is going to control, give us uh, the ability to control the stack. Uh, so we can uh, we can overwrite this value that we're going to jump to. So instead of jumping to there, we can say, hey, I want to jump to somewhere else. And this somewhere else, well, it cannot be our own shellcode. Why? Well, like I just explained, no execute is on, so we cannot jump to something that we just wrote. We, that's not possible. That won't work. So we have to search for things in the binary. What can that be? Well, that can be another function, so we can jump to a different function that's going to do stuff that we want. It can be a different instruction followed by a return. Uh, it, it can be anything that we want, but it has to be in the binary already. So usually what we, what you do is you jump to a different instruction that, for example, pops a value from the stack. Then you return. Then you jump to another instruction because, well, you can you can control the return values multiple times. So then you jump to a different instruction that pushes something to the stack to make sure that you do something that you want to do, that you achieve your goal. Uh, so then the instruction will re return again, and you can do that over and over and over and over to eventually have a full set of shellcode that's going to uh, do what you want. But it's also the possibility that there's a function that does what you want already. So what you need to do when you have identified, okay, this is a ROP, uh, return-oriented programming, and we can uh, control, we have a buffer overflow. The next step is to kind of go look into the binary, see if there's any useful gadgets. So this is called a gadget, something that you can use in your ROP chain. And if you if you 
tie them together multiple times. That's a wrap chain. Uh, so you chain your gadgets together. So let's go searching for some gadgets. So I'm going to just quickly in Ghidra, I'm going to check the list of functions. And we already see here there's a winner function. And this winner function is going to open flag.txt and uh, put the output to the um, standard output. So that's exactly what we want because we want the flag. So in this case, this gadget is just one function that does exactly what we want. This is a very simple uh, ROP. In the future, we will go into more difficult ones where we actually have to chain them together. But in this case, we can just use this example here where we, where we return to a function that does exactly what we want. In, in other videos, this will come forth. But in this case, we just want to control the return value and jump to this function that already exists in the binary. And we have an address of this function, uh, which I will show you. Uh, let's see if we can get the address here. Yeah, so this is the address in the function. So we, we know we have to jump to this address. Cool, cool. Let's see if we can actually do that. So first of all, we want to jump to this position. So we need to know at what point do we overwrite the uh, instruction pointer? What, at what point do we overwrite the place where we're going to jump to? Now we can do that by creating a pattern. And this is a cyclic pattern. So uh, let's create this. And we see this is, seems like a lot of garbage. But what we can do is we can input that, uh, which is going to cause a buffer overflow because we're inputting 200 uh, and then our um, buffer. If we go back to the main function, our buffer is only 48. So this is going to cause a buffer overflow most likely. And at that point, GDB is going to be able to tell us, hey, the stack pointer at the point of this overflow was, for example, these four things. And then you can say, okay, search me the location of these four things in this long string, and then you have the offset. That's pretty much how it works. I've explained this before in different videos, so if you don't quite understand it, go to my website link below, search for offset, and you'll find these two videos where I explain it as well, and use different methods to actually um, do this. So, okay, let's continue with this. So we're going to copy this pattern, and I'm going to say run this program and enter that pattern at our, as our input. And we see what has happened. Well, we've received a segmentation fault, as we expected, because it, this means that we jumped to an address that uh, wasn't weren't valid instructions. Okay. And we see here that the stack pointer currently contains this. So, what does that mean? In our next instruction, which was a return, which was a return, we were going to jump to this address. Now this address obviously isn't any valid code, so, so it wouldn't be able to jump to that. So that's why we got a segmentation fault. So let's see what the offset is of this uh, in our string. So we can do that by doing uh, pattern offset this. So the offset is 56, but you can also type pattern search, which is going to show you a bit more information. So it's going to say here the offset for uh, the stack pointer was 56 as well. So, okay, 56 is our offset. That's how much padding we need to get uh, to override the address that we're going to jump to. Cool. So now we also want to know where is this function, uh, this winner function in memory. We've already identified that, that in Ghidra, but you can also do it here in GDB. So that's a lot of output here. Uh, if we look through this, do we find that winner function? Yes, we do. And this is the address of the winner function. Great, so now let's start uh, working on kind of an exploit here. So I'm going to make this a bit bigger. Get that up here. All right, so we're going to, with Python, we're going to import pawn because we need that. Pawn tools, um, very useful. I used it before in videos. You can check my website. Uh, we'll then print. And first, we'll do our padding. So I'm just going to use A, and we identified that 56 is the amount of padding we needed. Cool. Then we need to get the address that we want to jump to. So that's uh, this, the address that we identified here. Uh, this P64 is going to pack this into um, in, into a, a, a string. So it's going to grab this address and it's going to use these, uh, turn this into bytes that are all right. So if you look at this, you see that uh, the order get changed around, and that has to do with endianess, which again I've also uh, explained in a couple of videos. So um, 
that's how it works. So uh, okay, so we have this as our payload currently. Let's put that into our into a file. So I like to use input.txt for my file. Great. So now we have this exploit. So what's this, what is this going to do? It's going to have a lot of padding and then jump to this address. Great. Let's run that. So we're going to cat our input.txt and pipe that into the function. And we see okay registered congratulations and congratulations was the beginning of this uh, winner function that we identified here mm, can i go there yeah see congratulations so that was a success now last thing we need to do is we need to check if that actually works on the server as well so this is the address of the server and the port and we see yes that works and we get the flag for this uh, binary exploitation challenge. So that was this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope I explained it in a manner that was easy to understand. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. I'm happy to answer any questions. If you have anything that you didn't understand and that you, you would like to see me explain in a different video, go ahead, comment it, and I will make sure that I pay extra attention to it, prepare something to explain that properly. Hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you back for another video. Take care guys, happy new year.